Hey everyone, so today should be the last day for this uh, engine removal tutorial step slash all kind of stuff. I don't even want to, I don't even know what to call these videos right now, but yeah, I'm pretty much I want the engine out today. So once I have the engine out today, then I could go ahead and clean it up and uh, switch all the accessories. And I still gotta look into the wiring of what to do with these extra wires and stuff that I see on my engine, which is not on the donor engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the hood off right now and just gonna take this ground wire off, the number 10, and then up here, these two bolts are number 11. And then same thing on this side, except it doesn't have a bolt, uh, not a bolt, a uh, ground on there. And then for these, you just use like a flathead and just like pry out this piece right here and then just knock it that way and it comes right off. But main thing is make sure somebody's holding up top here at least so that the engine, not the engine, the roof, not the roof, the hood doesn't fall down because since there won't be anything supporting it once those bolts are out. So the hood's off now and the only reason I took it off is because I wanted to put it on a donor car since I got to push it outside and I didn't want it sitting outside with out a hood on there since most likely my HOA would get on my butt about it so I at least have to make it look somewhat presentable now that I have the room now I could use the chair picker to go ahead and um, move it to the front at least I have like space now just to move things around and pretty much before I start working on getting the rest of this stuff off I'm just going to go ahead and start cleaning up inside here because yeah stuff is like all over the place my tools are everywhere and yeah, I don't like working like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up everything, get everything organized, and I'm gonna start back at it. So I got in here cleaned up a bit. I'm a tool squared away, and I feel a whole lot better now. Um, it's like, yeah, open air for me. So I'm able to have more room and yeah, make sure everything is accounted for when I'm going ahead and taking everything apart. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is start going to take off the intake manifold off. And once I get down into the depths of this, then we could go ahead and like disconnect the final few things and then take the mounts off and all that stuff. So I'm gonna use a number 11 socket right here and take off that bolt right here. And then I'm gonna use a longer wall one compared to this um, number 12 on the rest of these bolts right here. They crisscross all the way to the end. So one's up top and then it alternates and then one at the bottom, so. So all the bolts are out right now and I went ahead and just like labeled these connections right here to make sure that uh, next time when I'm ready to put these back together I remember exactly where it goes. Most likely I'm going to remember but just in case my brain just goes and brain farts that I at least know where it's going to go back in. Also just go ahead and take out this oil pressure switch right here. Wait. So I'm going to have to go ahead and take this bracket off, it's 213 and then move it off to the side. Uh, since this is not an OEM location for this, if you got an OEM setup and you didn't do the inlets um, and rerouted them to the passenger side of the car, you don't have to worry about this part right here. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and take these off and hang this over to this way. So now we could go ahead and take this uh, piece off right here. So you squeeze in on there and pull it off and then over here it's the same thing. Just see like a metal piece you just push down on it and pull it out on that connection and then there's going to be a box a black box behind here um you're gonna have to slide it off the intake manifold so i went ahead and got this one right here this is the spare one i have so it's this connection here you pull off and then there's like going to be a squeeze connection right here it's the same like this one right here you just push down and on the back of it there'll be this box on here that is slid on. So you pretty much gotta like pull it off right here. Cause if you look, it's like some indentations in here that keeps it grooved in. So as long as you just like jiggle it a little bit and pull, it'll come right off. So that's the easiest way I've been able to take it off in the past. So besides taking off these bolts, which is kind of hard cause you can't really see where you're unscrewing. So that's the easiest way to just, just pull them off just like that. If anybody got any other suggestions of how to take it off more efficient just put it down in the comments so we got one more connection that needs to be taken off i don't know why i'm forgetting all this stuff uh yeah 
So just all you gotta do is just push down on it. Like you see the tab on it and just pull back and it'll come right off. And then yeah, she's free now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start taking off the fuel line that this pretty much disconnected from the engine bay. So it's gonna be this silver line right here that goes up to the high pressure fuel pump right here. So what we're gonna have to do is disconnect this uh, plug right here, like pull it back, like so, pull it back. And then after it's pulled back, then you take off that screw right here. Um, I'll tell you the next, I'm gonna go check and see what size that is right there, but take this socket off right here and yeah. And then you should be able to just like wiggle it out of the high pressure fuel pump and yeah, that, and just tuck it away to the side. So when we pull the motor, it doesn't get bent or anything like that. So I use the pliers to go ahead and uh, loosen this bolt right here. So we'll just turn it to the right and it'll start to screw off. And then over here, that bolt right here, that's securing the line to the engine is a E12 socket. So just go ahead and start taking those off. So I'm gonna take both of these off and um, wiggle it free. With those parts loose, I could go ahead and just pull the fuel line out, the high pressure fuel pump. And this is how it looks. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this, uh, so not a socket, but this uh, sensor out. So push this clip in and pull up and it takes it all off. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, do that and then tuck this off to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this also. And this came off this vent tube that was on the, intake manifold let me go ahead and push this up here in the corner next to the steering rack and then for the fuel line it's on this bracket right here so i'm just going to pull these out of the bracket and then swing this over in the corner i'm going to point it up because if you leave it down there's this fuel that's going to keep on coming out of it so i'm going to go ahead and take this uh ac line off the ac compressor using the number six so i'm just going to take this off and move it off to the side next to where the fuel line is so to finish up the coolant system i'm gonna remove this line right here it runs all the way over to here and i use a flathead to go ahead and pull the pull this latch piece off and all i gotta do is pull it off and it comes right off the block and over here in front went ahead and pull this up too to remove the return line not a return line but the feed line for the coolant reservoir that runs over here so mine's relocated so yeah um i'm just gonna take these off and then take the other one off right down there now i'm gonna go ahead and start to take off this ground right here it runs pretty much from the mount all the way over to the chassis so i'm gonna take it off with a 13 millimeter right here and then there's another ground right here i'm gonna take that off with a what is this uh look like a 10 millimeter so take these two grounds off and almost in the home stretch. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt this line off the chassis so it could come off of the engine. And it's a T27 on these. So I already started pulling them out, but yeah, just take these out and this should be able to come off with the engine. It pretty much routes all the way over here to the uh, water pump and thermostat connection. And then also for this line that goes up to here. So next I want to need the car and I'm going to go ahead and take off these power steering lines. Uh, disconnect them from the body of the car. So right here is a 10 millimeter and over here is a 10 millimeter also. So taking a little break right now, just had my Capri Sun. And yeah, the only thing I have left to do now is just to do the power steering. Uh, so just draining out the fluid and then disconnecting the hoses from the steering rack from the power steering pump and all that, and then loosen the engine mounts. So I'm gonna go ahead and also take uh, this engine off the engine mount and pretty much throw it on that tire and then hook it up to the engine and then pull it out. So my girl went ahead and got a cover for the car. She's like, oh, it doesn't look good with it out there sitting out there without any headlights and all that crap on there. So I'm like, whatever. So went ahead, got a, 
cover for it and yeah, it looks pretty good sitting out there now and yeah so pretty much i put a bucket underneath there and there's a bolt up here up top so it's a 19 millimeter so i'm gonna go ahead actually i'm gonna take off both of them one's a 19 millimeter i believe the other one's like a 22 or 23 so go ahead and loosen in this right now actually it's not that bad I'm leaking. Take these. Oh, yes, it is leaking. <laughs> it's leaking to the side. Ah, it's going to be messy. Oh, at least it's catching in the bucket. So I have the engine off and have the hoist over here. So it's all up and ready right now. So pretty much the mountain hole, which you use is to screw it in is right here. And generally you could find, it's pretty much a tow hook thing that you put in the front of the car whenever you get towed. So go ahead and screw it in here and then you get your chain and then you put it, uh, you loop the clamp over through that hole right there in the back. So you run the chain, clamp it here, run it through here and then screw it through inside of there like that or run the chain and then just clamp this down and then lift it it'll be a lot easier if you had a leveler but i don't have one so pretty much you have to like finesse it around to get the engine out a little bit like up down and move it a little bit but here on the spare block you can see the where it's screwed in right here and the chain rungs add a knot it up a little bit to make the chain a little bit shorter and then it gets clamped in right here. So I'm on the passenger side of the car right now, so I'm gonna loosen the passenger side engine mount. So it's an E14, so these two right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those two out and that will loosen the engine off the mount. So on the driver's side, I'm just gonna go ahead and take off this 17 bolt right here. So once I take it off, then this side will be loose right here. Uh, I might have to take these piece off right here, like take the mount off the engine once I take that screw off so I can get more clearance, but I think I'll be good with just taking that bolt off right here. We'll see when we try to take the engine out. So the bolt's off now, everything should be off, and I'm pretty much gonna go ahead and double check everything, make sure that I don't have anything missing. So the only thing I noticed was this one right here. It's like the most blatantly obvious piece right here and I missed it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and screw it, like push in and then pull up and then it'll come right out like so and just move this off to the side but other than that everything looks to be good so i'm gonna start lifting the hoist up and pulling it out and i'm gonna use my second jack that's on the transmission now to try and go ahead and leverage the engine help me lift it out if i had a leveler it would be much easier that way but yeah i'm just gonna try it this way so taking out the engine, I noticed that, yeah, I do have to take this bracket off. So I don't have the correct bit up here for it. So I'm just gonna use a 15, put it over, hammer it over, and just go ahead and take these one, two, and that bolts over here off. And then take the bracket off, then I have enough room and clearance to take the motor out. It's long. Why it look longer? Transmission that one don't have a transmission. Mm -hmm. Also, oh, you gotta attach it. You need to move the car.
so I got the motor out now so all I got to do now is go ahead and just clean everything up clean the blocks off and take the transmission off put it over there on the new engine and then I'm gonna see about this wiring right here to see what I could do about it and then yeah tomorrow I'm just gonna pretty much clean up the engines and uh, most likely just take the transmission off and swap it over tomorrow so my timeline it seemed like I should be able to put the motor back in the car by like Wednesday or so so which is like what's the Saturday something like that. four days from now I was giving myself that little leeway so uh, yeah I'll see y'all in the next video so like comment subscribe and yeah